Now he powers the seven up. Looks very even with Davison. In fact, now the 18 of Davison has the advantage across the stripe and down to turn one. Yeah, Davison got a huge push. I believe that's Christopher Bell, his teammate there. Nice to have a teammate restarting behind you. New leader, James Davison. 20 in the seven, once again, making a little contact. That's been a uh, theme for today. Matt Tift in the two, driving through for third. So at the jump, the 18, good traction, newer tires. Yeah. And Algar now trying to come back, and Elliott is off track. Just a sponsor sign this out there that was down, so he's off and running again. Might not get that top 15 we were looking for, though. Well, he was there in position to do it. Bill Elliott back on track. Meanwhile, up front, Davison now getting a challenge back from Allgaier. So Justin Marks trying to take that four spot away from Christopher Bell also. Oh, wow. All the way up on the chip before he made that shift. No! Oh! Mistake by Davison. Give the lead back to Allgaier. So easy to do, Dale. These are heavy cars with a thinner tire than an open wheel with a fat tire and a very light race. Yeah, and especially at, just as the guys talked about a while ago, being out front sometimes is the more difficult thing to do, especially when you have cars that you're not used to. Justin Allgaier huh. laying it out and back to the lead in the seven. Now what will Matt Tiff do with Davison? Gives him a look in the mirror. Behind, drivers locking up. Oh, just everybody giving it everything they have. I think that was Brendan Gaughan that had his locked up back there that time. Six laps to go. Let's look at the pass that Justin Allgaier made on James Davison. There it was. Yeah, and that's just the door it opened up, but that's what you look for is it's that opportunity when a driver you're trying to put some pressure on when they, you force them into that mistake. This is exactly what Allgaier wanted to have happen. There's the lead as it stands now. A few car lengths for Allgaier. Davison hangs on to second. Now tipped into third. Justin Marks showing that the 42 car is real. Yeah, and Christopher Bell trying to work his way back up through there. Got to beat around a little bit there on that restart after helping his teammate get to the lead. That's gratitude for you, right? <laughs> yeah. Hey, guys, and, and I've been watching that battle there, and I watched them go off into turn one, and Matt Tift is doing a lot of black blocking on that 42. I'll be very curious if that 42 gets back to his beard bumper here, if he might not just move him out of the way. He was blocking him. Not once, but twice down the front straightaway. At some point, you just lose patience, don't you? Yeah, you do. But, yeah, he, Matt Tiff is probably fortunate that Justin Marks is a really good guy, and, and he understands his situation in this. But he knows he has a fast race car, and these laps are winding down. We're going to be down to five to go the next time they come back around. Matt Tiff sat on pole. Qualifying held earlier today. A good lap for him in a very fast race car. One stage one. Needs to pick up a couple of positions. There you see him. He's going to take home the big prize today. This is all a matter now of Justin Allgaier. He's totally in control of this race. It's just not overdriving a couple of these corners to where you find yourself giving that back. He's very experienced at this, and we've talked about what a great road racer he has become. Just so very talented at you know, finishing third, actually with Grant second right, until the last corner at Watkins Land, and then came on in one mid Ohio. You can see he's stretching it out right now. Race fans know the name Justin Allgaier. Grew up on the short tracks, raced in ARCA, drove for Roger Penske in this Xfinity series, left for a couple of years, drove in the Monster Energy Cup series, came back to drive for Junior Motorsports. And it's been a great marriage. Yeah, Dale Jr. and, and Kelly, uh, 
Bernard, they, they've done a great job in putting this whole organization together. They've got very talented people, good drivers, a good mix of young drivers, uh, veteran drivers, uh, and really are making it work. And Justin Allgaier is really taking advantage of this opportunity. You know, they paired him with Jason Burdett, and, you know, they, they just have a good relationship and combination there uh, and great communication between them and uh, a huge uh, desire to win as we've got another car off the track. That's Brian Henderson in the 38. He's had an adventurous day. <laughs> we can say that about a lot. Yeah, there's the third. Mark. Yep. Marks gets tipped, and now will Bell do the same? Bang and fenders trying to stay on the pavement. Yeah, Bell was giving back some of the treatment that he's been getting <laughs> moved around here today. So that makes it very interesting. What? How much car does James Davison have compared to Justin Marks? I'm not sure. I think Marks. Uh oh. There's the two. Bells around. Back there. Off the bumper of tip. Bumper of tipped. Have to be careful right here, trying to join back in. But just like Mid Ohio, it's going to cost him. Cost him points. The man that was in second for the we talk about this regular season points is the man that's leading the race right now. There you go. Christopher Bell solid for the playoffs, but those bonus points waiting for the regular season champion could be in jeopardy. Parker. And guys, how unfortunate for Christopher Bell. Once again, showing that he's figured out this road course stuff, had top five speed again and gets spun out late in one of these races. Just truly unfortunate. Well, I'm going to put a little bit of that on Bell right there, too. He locked it up, but he tried to get a little bit too much going into that left-hander there. And that gave Matt Tift, who had some momentum through the center of the corner. I don't think Matt backed out any uh, because of the rubbing that he took. Seagoff track as well. Man, that I'm disagreeing. <laughs> I'm saying rubbing was racing. That's wrecking right there. I'm putting that one on Matt. Meanwhile, Bell finds himself back with the zero of Garrett Smithley challenging. Up front, Marks is right there with Davison. So James Davison, one of the drivers who competed in this year's Indianapolis 500. Reminder that tonight, IndyCar Series racing from Gateway. Pre-race coverage begins at 8 Eastern on NBCSN. Of course, all of us still praying for and best wishes going out to Robert Wickens, who was involved in that horrific crash at Pocono. And he's on the men, but boy, it's going to be a long road. We wish him the best. Yeah, that was a scary accident to watch. You know, those guys are amazing drivers and what the positions they put themselves in, especially at a place like Pocono where the speeds are so high. So, yeah, we just wish him the very best and uh, tune in tonight and watch a great race. Got one here. DJ, I'm flinching because the 18 of Davison has gotten squirrely there and Marks is all over him. Yeah, if you want to block, you're going to take that chance. You just don't know as we see Christopher Bell having to come to pit road. It'll be costly in the points, but Justin Marks has his eyes set on trying to get that second spot where he can go after Justin Allgaier. That's right, time winding down when they cross the stripe this next time. There will only be three laps remaining, 12 miles at Road America. We watched these two battle, and we talked about the, the organization that Dale Jr. And, and Kelly put together there. Another big part of that is Rick Hendrick and Hendrick Motorsports and the things that they've done to help build this up and, and make it championship caliber organization with all the technical aspects and the, uh, everything that Rick Hendrick does. So they've got a solid uh, foundation there. See Justin Mark trying to make this pass. In the mirror of James Davison does not make the move. Parker. And and Justin, Justin Marks needs to make this pass as soon as possible. He's about a half a second faster than the leader, but he's a second and a half behind the leader with coming up on three laps to go. Justin Algar just needs to make three more smooth laps, which we're used to seeing him make aggressive moves to get himself to the lead at the end of the race. It's kind of nice to see his crew chief put him out front once in a while. Oh, as we see Brennan gone off, I believe that's... It came in corner, I think, there. And also, just to add on, Justin Marks, remember he told us before this race, this is the best car he's ever had here. And he really felt like this was his best chance he's had in the dry to get in victory lane. Let's see if he can make this pass and run down that seven. Yeah, the problem is he's not going to outbreak Davidson into one of these corners. Davidson's really good at protecting that part of it. So you can see Justin Marks sees that kind of. So now he's back in this entry off just a little bit, trying to get a run on the exit of the corner to see if he might get up beside. Coming to a 
point. He might try that once again, though. We've seen it down here in turn five. Top speed. Here they come. Marks takes a look. Will he late break and outbreak James Davison? He's doing it. Can he make the corner? He does it. Marks to second. Wow, what a pass that was. Great what? exit by Davidson. Now he's got the advantage back on the inside. Marsh can hold him off right here. He'll have the advantage to the next corner. Oh. Davidson takes it back, though. Nice grip exiting the corner for Davidson. Meanwhile, Allgaier gets away. Here comes Marks back. Oh, that's going to be contact, and they both spin. They're both backwards on the racetrack. Here comes Matt Tiff and Cole Custer. They're going to go by. Daniel Hemrick gets by, and they've spun themselves out of contention, DJ. Yeah, they just basically handed this thing to Justin Allgaier, but that's, you know, they're trying. That's all you do. You know, you know you don't have many laps. Neither one of them racing for points. They're just trying to do what they can to win the race. I said it earlier. Do you have the corner? Let's see. <laughs> I don't think it matters at this point, but... Nope. How far you want to drive it? What are you willing to do? One quarter panel only. Yeah. I think they'll... That'll just be a differing of opinion. <laughs> yeah. I think Davison will agree that he did not have the corner. Marks was going for it. Here it is again. I didn't think Justin Marks was going to make it down into turn five as fast as he went down in there. And then Davison did a great job of coming back. Yeah, that's that's racing. Maybe that gave him the confidence to try to make that move, DJ. Well, he, he had to try. Yeah, you're frustrated with yourself at that point because you made the pass and then you gave it back. And so then you think, OK, I've got one more shot at this. I can't waste any more time. Two laps remaining for Justin Allgaier. Can he make it two for three on the road courses this season? He's got a huge lead, six seconds now. Matt Tift is a second place car. Cole Custer has worked his way back up into the top five. He is third. Daniel Hemrick come back to fourth after that uh, incident that he had where he was coming to turn 14 and got knocked out. A really good recovery for him. Sappers in fifth. We watch all guy work. You got a huge lead here, but there's still a lot of work to be done. We talk about a four-mile road course. You got 14 corners, a lot of shifting. Don't get too complacent here. The first, the last thing you want to do is start taking things easy, and then you find your shift points are different. You're doing things a little bit different. You wheel hop. You miss a corner. You get off the the track just a little bit, and even though you've got a big lead, you can't afford a mistake. 14 corners. Allgaier has to hit him perfectly. If someone else doesn't, that could cause a caution. Could send this thing into overtime. That would be interesting. Yeah, and here's Christopher Bell. You know, Dave, we set this up at the beginning of the show today in, in Countdown to Green that you have to be careful. You might be having a great day running in the top five just as Christopher Bell was doing, and then one mistake late. We have so many cars. We talked about the average number of cars on the lead lap here is 28. What do we have here today? 28. Bell's back in 27. And that happened to, whoa, off track for Ryan Truex. Again. I know that happened to Regan Smith when he was running this seven car, and it was at one of these road courses where, you know, he was good all day, all day great. And then last lap, last two laps, boom. Yep, day in the tank. Yeah, he's woed it down a little bit. Those tires are <laughs> chirping quite as much as they were earlier. And Allgaier just has to hit his marks perfectly for about four and a half more miles. Yes, he's getting the job done. I want to go back a little bit further. We talked about Marks and Je uh, Ross Chastain, who is in that battle for that final spot. And we talked about he's going to be in the 42 car for a couple of races coming up for Chip Ganassi. He's in that seventh spot right now. Justin Allgaier leads. White flag. One lap to go. Presented by Credit One Bank. more things on a road course, DJ, when you've got a nice <laughs> one to go? Well, yeah, because you're still having to shift, do everything. But he's been in this position. You know, and we talked about that the two drivers getting together, Justin Mark and James Davidson, that they handed it to him. He put himself in this position. He yep. went up and retook the lead after losing it on that restart. Did an outstanding job. I mean, you know, he's looking like this is going to be a third and two first in these three road course races so far. Allgaier through turn five, turns left, goes uphill. You don't get this luxury in this many times of having a six-second lead on the last lap. 
They're always very competitive, but he worked extremely hard before that happened. Checking around the track so far, clean and green. Others racing for position and for points. Yes, a lot still going on. Justin Allgaier's got a nice lead, but there's a lot happening between second, third, fourth, fifth. Carefully through the carousel, feathering the throttle. Back up through the gears, down to the high-speed kink. This car's looked a little interesting off of this corner all day. Yeah, and this is going to put him in front. So he's getting five more playoff points by winning the race here, and then he's going to put himself in the position where he's going to be the regular season points leader that could gather those 15 bonus points that go uh, along with that for the playoffs. Yep, it'll help pick up the points he lost in Dover, failing post-race inspection after yep. he won. That just shows you what an outstanding season he's had. And we put, showed you that graphic earlier. The last 10 races, he's been right there yep. with Christopher Bell. Yep. He's really been pouring it on. Final corner for Justin Allgaier. Now all he has to do is go straight. Awesome, awesome job again today, buddy. Really good job. That's the work. You guys are awesome. From the crew and the driver. Sight never gets old. Heck of a job, boys. God is good, man. The crew, thank you. Spotters, thank you. Team guys. There's your Road America winner, Justin Allgaier. What a fantastic day for him. Yeah, buddy. Crew is happy about that. Total team effort. And on a discipline that they only do three times a year normally, he'll have a fourth shot this year on the Roval yes. at Charlotte Motor Speedway. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In the playoffs. In the playoffs. Yeah. And once again, I just, he does an outstanding job driving this car and maneuvering through traffic, getting the job done. But Jason Burdett and his guys deserve a lot of credit making the call to bring him to pit road, which turned out even better than they anticipated uh, what may happen as the caution came out just a couple of laps later. So uh, when things are going good for you, it's really good. It's a fun sport to be a part of. <laughs> yeah. That's for sure. Average finish on the road courses in the three, 1.6. That's pretty good. Hard to beat that. <laughs> a little show for the fans down in turn five. They saw a lot of action today. Oh, did they ever. Once again, Road America did not disappoint far as just having a really competitive race and fun to watch. By the way, that ties Christopher Bell for lead in the number of wins on the season at four each. Tyler Reddick is the other driver who is locked in based on his Daytona win. And as of today, earning enough points to lock themselves into the playoffs, the double zero of Cole Custer, the one of Elliott Sadler, and the 21 of Daniel Hemrick. Good finishes there. Hemrick was third, Custer yeah. was fourth. Elliott was fifth. Yeah, four of those top five that we talked about battling for that regular season championship, they finish in the top five. And another second place finish for Matt Tibb on a road course. I'm telling you. Celebration lap, only slightly slower than his white flag lap was, was kind of like a celebration <laughs> lap. Don't want to call those too soon though. No, Not no. Not in this sport. Hey, now that's the way to do the carousel. Try to drift it. <laughs> Not quite. I think that's his teammate right behind him. He'll have a good laugh about that one. <laughs> Justin Allgaier, the 32-year-old from Riverton, Illinois. Today's winner. And here was a winning pass. Yeah, a little mistake by Davidson, but Allgaier had been coming back, coming back after he lost the lead, and that just put enough pressure for Davidson to get in there a little hot, trying to keep the seven behind him. Allgaier sees that opening, takes advantage, takes it to victory lane. And there are the victory burnouts for Justin Allgaier in Wisconsin.